of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. I come to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. All right. Kasha, do you mind, like, hitting, I think, a light in the back there that kind of brings it up? Yeah. One of the, one of the push buttons. There we go. No, don't go for that one. Right. There, yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that, that'll work. Okay, cool. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. All right, so uh, we, uh, last week, uh, what, was, what was the feast day that we celebrated last week? It was? Okay, great. So this is the first week after Epiphany, and each week we are uh, focusing on epiphanic moments that are happening. So last week, we each, each week have a model that's really leading us through, through this epiphanic season. And so the first week, we had three characters who helped lead us through Epiphany. And who were those three characters? The Magi, right, and the Magi, and they brought three gifts, and those three gifts are going to help us to know of how we grow into Jesus. So the first gift they gave was gold. Why? He's the king. He's the king of kings. These Gentiles who are going to change the whole game, that God sends three Gentiles to say, now Jesus is for everyone, that say this is the king of all kings, not Herod, this baby, king of all kings. And then the second gift they give is? And the frankincense, because, because, Gavin's like, don't ever look at, don't look at me, brother. Do not look at me. Because of why? Yeah, a priest, right? He's the great high priest. That's what you use for the incense inside the temple. They're not walking into the ritual temple. They're going to this baby and saying, this baby is now the great high priest. All right. Number three is that they also give myrrh, and the myrrh is used for? Yeah, healing and embalming, because they know these Gentiles, again, these Gentiles know that this king, uh, this high priest, will also be the Savior, will also give his life. This is turning the idea of king, of Messiah, upside down. No one expected that, that, that this person would give their life for the people, for the forgiveness of their sins. And so they knew all this. Great. And we talked about last week of how that is a guide for us to grow into Jesus to come and boldly and courageously to pursue the Messiah, to kneel down, to submit ourselves to the Messiah, to this King, to this Savior, and to ask ourselves, do we look at Jesus as our King, as our Savior, and also as our great high priest, and submit our gifts, give us our gifts, and say, just take all of me and use me to build your kingdom. So if this last week was talking about growing into Jesus, this week we must be talking about... Reaching out with love, that's right, because that's our mission statement. Growing into Jesus, reaching out with love. And the guidance that we have this week on that, of course, is the feast of what just happened in the Bible. What did we just read about? The baptism. The baptism of who? The baptism of Jesus, yes. The baptism of our Lord, that's right. So the baptism of our Lord, but how does the baptism of our Lord have to deal with reaching out with love? Sounds like more of something about growing into Jesus, right? Well, we, we, we got to look at this baptismal um, idea that this is the Jordan River, right? And, and, and John is already out there, and he's baptizing people for the repentance of their sins, but he's saying, yo, I'm not the Messiah. I'm, I'm preparing the way for the one to come. Um, but to understand what's about to happen here in the water, we need to go all the way back to Genesis 1. 
all the way back to Genesis 1 because when creation was happening, when the Holy Trinity up above decided to say, let's do creation, this thing called creation, it was made out of water, and the water was a watery chaos. There was a watery chaos, the Bible says. So this creation that we're a part of was born out of a watery chaos. But if you remember in Genesis 1, what happened was the rucha in Hebrew, which is the, the breath of God, the spirit of God, which we could interpret as the Holy Spirit, was blown over this watery chaos. And that formed creation. That's the new creation that came out of what Yahweh, what God was up to. And it was good, the Bible says. But the whole part is the Holy Spirit came upon this chaos, this watery chaos, and it was good. And then, so then the creation happened, and as we all know, through patriarchs, through sages, through prophets, we continue to fall and to stumble as a human race, as children of God. We weren't really fully worshiping him. We started worshiping other idols, other kings, other saviors, doing other things in our life, but not Yahweh, not the one and true God. Till we get to the point where God says, that's it. I'm coming down. I'm coming down, and my, I'm going to walk amongst you. The Son of God will walk amongst you, and he will be there, and he will not just be God, but he's also going to be fully God and fully man. Oh, wow, this changes everything. We're not seeing this in other religions. Okay, so fully God, fully man. So he comes in, and on this day, Jesus begins his ministry at the ripe old age of 30. And he's starting, and he's going to walk, and he sees John, who's baptizing, and Jesus gets in the water to be baptized too. Why does Jesus got to be baptized? Save him from his sin? Pardon me? Showing the way? I like it. Any other reason why is Jesus getting baptized? He wants to. He does want to. And why is that? Pardon me? Fully man? There's a fully man part of it? He's waiting for the Holy Spirit. Jesus got in front of him the Jordan River. Jordan River, if you've been out to the Holy Land, it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. It's dirty. It's pretty muddy. And, 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 and this is like, again, we're back to Genesis 1. It's a chaotic type water. When you go get baptized in the Jordan River, you're going to be stepping like just in a bunch of mud. You know, this is not... And, 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 and when we do our beach baptisms, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's a great landscape. But it's chaotic waters that start coming upon, and we got to have like eight lifeguards out there and a wall of dudes just like, you know, protecting it. You know, we had one kid that we baptized one time who came up crying because the water was that intense. But that's the life we live in. That's the chaos that we live in. So Jesus is going to say, here's that chaos. And I'm not, as God, just going to stand outside and just kind of give you a little prophecy and say, hey, hey, go, go tell them to do this and go tell them to be better people and, 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 and make sure you, you, you give them some good guidance as a priest. No, no, what God says is what I'm going to do is that I am going to come in here and I am, oh, now you can see my socks, yeah. And I'm going to walk into the, raw, the chaotic waters. I'm going to su submerge myself up to here into the chaos. Jesus the Christ, I will enter in with you. You will not be alone. I will walk with you into these waters. And in Eastern Christianity, like Coptic Christians and Eastern Orthodox Christians, if you look at those old paintings, you got Jesus sitting there being uh, submerged in the water, and below him are just all the like old gods with a small g, right? All these other idols. And he's coming to quell the chaos. He's coming to stop the chaos. And we all know this happens because the sky is going to go up, and who shows up? The Holy Spirit. Boom! Just like in Genesis. Just like in Genesis. The Holy Spirit comes, and then who speaks? Yeah, the Father. We got the whole Trinity. We're back at day one. Because now we got a new creation. A brand new creation. So now we got this blessed moment. 
We got the Messiah. We got God coming into the chaos of this world, to the struggles of this world, to the brokenness of this world. And Jesus is saying, I'm going to walk into the brokenness. I'm not going to shy away from it. I'm going to be there with you into it. In your deepest, darkest struggles, in all your sin, and all the brokenness, and all the injustices of this world, I'm walking into this chaotic water. And I am here to bring stability. I'm bring, here to bring peace. I'm here to bring compassion and wholeness and gentleness and forgiveness and kindness. And I'm going to walk into it. And the Holy Spirit is going to anoint this. And God's going to come down and say, you are my son. And he's going to say, you're going to follow after me and you will be baptized and you will be baptized and you will be baptized and you will be baptized. And the Lord will say, you are my daughter with whom I am well pleased. You are my daughter with whom I'm well pleased. You are my son with whom I'm well pleased. And then we go party, right? Is that what Jesus did after his baptism? He went and, like they had a big party. They got like a taco truck, and it was like, yay, Jesus is here. We're all good. The king is here. That was, that's what happened, right? What's the first thing that he did? He was praying, but what did he do physically? Where did he go? He went into the wilderness. He didn't go into a throne. He didn't go into some kingdom somewhere and present himself and say, I am here. I am here to save you all. No, he goes into the wilderness and he faces the deepest and the darkest. He faces the temptation of Satan. And he goes up in the mount, what we think Mount Hernan, and he's up there um, and he gets tempted by the devil. So the first thing he does is he defeats the devil and he defeats the temptation of the devil. Then he comes down from there and then he goes into a home. And the first thing he does is he's Simon, Simon's mother-in-law. And what does he do? He heals her. He heals Simon's mother-in-law, right? And then he goes into the temple. This is all in the first five chapters of Luke. Just the first five chapters. And I'm only at first, like Luke 4 right now. Then he goes in and he's into the temple. And that's where he proclaims and says, hey, this prophecy has been fulfilled. But there's a dude with a demon. And he goes to the guy with the demon. And he heals the man with the demon. Gets the demon out of him. Then he goes out and people find out about this. And they start bringing sick people all over. And he's healing sick people. And then after that, he's walking down the streets. He, and he's in the city of Capernaum. And he meets a uh, uh, tax collector, Levite. And he says, well, you and I are going to dine together. And he converts him. He converts him to follow a new path of life. And he goes out and he heals more people. And, he's, and, he, and there's a paralytic that he heals that can't get to him. And they open up the roof. This is all in the first five chapters. His ministry has just begun. And he is off and running into the chaos. If you want to find Jesus Christ in your life, you go into the neighborhood of chaos because that's where Jesus is calling you. We grow into Jesus, and once we grow into Jesus, he says, okay, come on, come on with me. You're going to come out and reach out with love because we got some work to do. We got some healing to do. We got to get out of our comfort zone. And we follow Jesus' example today in Luke. Yes, we're going to go into the worship areas. We're going to go into the city. We're going to go into the streets. We're going to go into the wilderness. We're going to go out to the places that bring us uncomfortable, the places that might be unsafe, the places that might be a little dangerous. But we got the power of Jesus to do this, and we do this as a community. That is what reaching out with love is. Because we are part of the new creation. Jesus is calling us to be part of this new creation. And it will be scary, but it will be filled with joy and with such great love. And it makes you deeper, that growing into, that reaching out with love gets you to grow into Jesus. And that growing into Jesus gets you to reach out with love. You can't have one without the other. That's the beauty of our mission statement. And that's the beauty of our call. So this week, we look to this baptism, our baptism of what it really means to be baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just remind you, we have our baptismal covenant on page 305 of the Book of Common Prayer, which I know you guys probably read every single night, so you have this in memory, but I'll just read it here just in case you guys don't remember. The final two uh, uh, vows that we take, will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Do you know your response? I will with God's help. Here comes a big one. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Of every human being. And we all say, 
I will with God's help, because we will fail, but we will do it with God's help. That's reaching out with love. What are the ways that we do that here? Come on, St. Mary's. How do we, how do we reach out with love? Ministry. Stephen Ministry, a great way. It's two years just in the making, and it's growing, and it's blossoming. It's a ministry that comes together. It's raising up a bunch of leaders. It takes a team of people who says, you're in a chaotic moment of your life. We want to walk beside you. We want to walk beside you, our empathy, and feel, your, and feel you and, and, and be part of it, um, your brokenness and, and help you walk for Christ to come in and to be the healer. How else? What else do we do? Oh, this is great. Okay, well, which one? Backpack buddies. Backpack buddies, right? A team of people going out and, and seeing a, a need that's in the community to get healthy food towards children. Give me another one. Out, reaching out with love. Youth group. youth group? Yeah, youth group gets on the mission, right? They get challenged. They get put in an uncomfortable position. They get sent out where they grow into Jesus for sure, but then there's a mission component to it where they're going out and reaching out with love and going into neighborhoods, getting out of their comfort zone and helping people who can't do for themselves. Give me another one. The thrift store. My gosh. It's not just Kathy sitting there by herself doing it. No, she's got a team of people. You got to get a team of people together. A whole crew of people to come in and do this thrift shop that becomes a major contact point between us and the outside community. If not, we're just a bunch of St. Mary's Episcopalians doing our own thing and being like, hey, this is our cool little like church. No, we're reaching out with love. We open our doors. We're offering clothes to people who are either destitute or just want a good discount or just want to have, you know, just find the latest fad that's at St. Mary's. But it's there, and it raises money, and that money goes towards outreach. The thrift store is constantly writing checks for Samaritan House, for La Haya, for all these other places. What else? Mary's Kitchen. It takes a flock of people to get that going. All right, Rosemary, you're right there. But it takes, I mean, it's like 20 volunteers. I mean, they, it is a huge production. And it's not just for the guests who come in here. It's for the Salvation Army truck. It's for the veterans. It's for the, um, the 10th Street Community Center. Just hundreds and hundreds of meals. But it is a, a need that someone at some point said there is a need for us to invite the community in here, for us to know our neighbors and love our neighbors. And there's a need out there where we got people living in the woods and we want to support and give them food and get, support the Salvation Army as they go do that. This is the call. And there's more and more of that. We got 50 different ministries that are happening. And all those ministries are also growing into Jesus. Because if you ever want to take a ride with that Salvation Army truck and go out into the woods and say, Salvation Army, Salvation Army, and see the people who come out of the woods. The eight-year-olds. The eight-year-olds with their mom that are there living out in the woods. Oh, your heart's going to break. But be able to get, offer a meal, talk with them, pray with them, form trust, form a relationship. Eye to eye, not looking down, eye to eye. Jesus, Jesus is alive. And that's where we begin to big trust. So we're out in the neighborhoods. We're out in the city. We're out in the streets. That's part of what Alpha was all about, is building new trust, building new relationships. The MLK event is coming up on the 20th. We're going to have a booth there to continue the relationships that we are building in the community of St. Mary's to say, we are here to love our neighbor. And there's a parade that's going to be. I'm going to be inviting all of you guys to be marching with us in the parade for everyone to know that St. Mary's is here to reach out with love. We are partners in this community to be a part of the new creation and to partner with everyone else. But we all got to be on board. We all got to be on board to do this. We all got to give our time. We got to give our energy to grow in, grow into, to, to uh, grow into Jesus and reach out with love. And that's why, who's got a card? You got a card? Guys, this is why this is so doggone important. Because it, let, it, it gets us all involved, this pledge card that you see. This nice 70s disco pledge card, all right? This says, I'm in. I believe in this. I believe in the new creation. I believe in, in going the distance. I want more meals to be served. I want more Stephen ministers to be raised up. I want more outreach to happen. I want to reach out there. I want a trip to Haiti. I want work trips to go all over the place. I want two mission trips. But we all got to be in on this to keep the structure going be doing what Jesus is calling us to get into the neighborhood of chaos. 
Because if we feel like we're just chilling in our own neighborhood of comfortability, we're missing the mark. That's not what Jesus was doing. And we are called to be like Jesus, to walk with Jesus, and to be one with Jesus. And when you read the scripture and you read the gospel, he ain't chilling. He is out there following where the greatest needs are and providing the love and the compassion and the kindness and the wholeness of the healing. And he says, I am blowing the Holy Spirit on all of you all, and you can do it too. And you will grow into a deep relationship with me, and we're going to heal this world together. This stewardship time, this is when we all get skin in the game and say, I'm a part of this. I believe in this, and let's do more of it. I believe what St. Mary's is doing. I believe that lives are being transformed. When we have people come in off the streets into the office who need clothes. We had two homeless kids come in the other day where they're on a walk and they're trying to walk to Tallahassee. They had their clothes were all, all beat up, all nothing. We say, hey, hey, come on over to the thrift shop. Kathy's ladies were over there and said, what can we get you kids? And get them some clothes. We had some food. We were able to get some food, get them all set up, get them on their way. Just little touch points so they can feel that, wow, someone recognized me. Someone loved me. Someone gave me dignity. And the faces of the people during the mission trip when we go out to their yards where they haven't had anyone help fix their yards or their homes because they're just alone because they're a widow and they have this team of 18 kids just show up and say, what do you need? What do you want? Oh, you want me to do this? And I'll tear down this tree and tear down this bush and, 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 and take all this stuff away? Yes. And why do we do this? Well, it's just Jesus. Can we pray? The love of God is alive. Fill this out. You've never done it before. Shows that we're all in. Myself, Father Todd, the staff, all of us together. And let's build this kingdom. Let's reach out with love and be able to build the kingdom that God is saying, yes, I believe in this. I believe in the kingdom of God. I believe what's happening here in this present moment. Not in the afterlife, but right here. God is calling us. Let's go all in. Amen. So let's stand. And as one church, as a community, let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.